Have you ever wished that you had a drop-down list of predefined attribute value choices that you can use when you're doing your edits in QGIS? Maybe it's so that you can standardize the attribute values to be used or just to prevent misspelling. It makes data entry easier, especially when you're in the field. It is definitely much easier to be able to select from a list rather than type when you have a, an environment that is not easy to type in. In QGIS, the answer to this is to use attribute value maps. I'm going to show you with this simple little map how we can do this. In this map, I have my roads that I want to add an attribute value, a drop down for my road type. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you real quickly. If we go to attribute table. If I have attributes for my road type, if I start editing on this and I go to type, I can type whatever I want in here. There's nothing that's going to stop me from typing something that's incorrect or not a, a valid attribute or a valid abbreviation. To fix that or make it less likely to happen, so what I'm going to do is add a value map to this. I'm going to right click on here on the layer that I'm interested in, click properties. Now this will open the layer properties dialog box and from here I'm going to go down to the tab on the left that says attribute form. Once there, I want to select the field that I'm interested in. In this case, it is type. You notice this type is a text. So when this opens up, the second section here, widget type, is where we're going to look for this. You'll notice by default it says it is text edit is the widget that it uses. And we're going to use what we call the value map. In this, we have an option here now that we can enter values that are going to be the value that gets put into the attribute table. This is what is actually stored, and we also can put a description. Where this is handy is if you have values that are codes, maybe a, a number or some other kind of abbreviation, but you want to have what that code represents. Perhaps, you know, like land use, you might have a land use code where in the description you'll put a text description of it. Makes it easier for people to see this when they're doing from a drop down list and they don't have to remember what all the codes are. So I can actually put in values here. I could put in uh, numeric values. We'll put in a zero. Right now we'll call this one unknown. We might do like a one. And if we're doing for street types, maybe I put in an avenue. If I put in a two here, you know, drive. If I have a lot of different attribute values that I want to be able to select from, I need to look at a better way to do this. Typing these in right now, if I say OK, you'll see that if I go to my roads, do attribute value, and I start my editing in this case, and I do this drop down list now, you can see there are my values that I just put in there. Now it knows that there's one already in here and it lets me know that. We'll stop editing. We're going to go back to the properties, back to my type, back to here. So rather than having to type 100 or who knows how many possible choices there are going to be, I have a couple options. One of these options is I can load data from a layer. Now, if there is an existing layer that I have that has the same values I want to use, I can choose this from the layer, then I can navigate to that layer, or in this case, another source layer, and I can find that value that I want to use. Once I find that value that I want to use, then I can say, hey, it's going to be my value, and in my description, I put, might put another uh, description that I want to use rather than what they have. I want to show you how to use a CSV file. This is, I find to be the easiest way to do this. And from a CSV file, I'll show you this real quick. I've got one that I'm going to use that I've already created. I'm going to open this up in LibreOffice. Any kind of spreadsheet, whether you use Excel or whatever, will work. To have your CSV file, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to have the first value, comma, the second value. And then in, you open a CSV file inside of a spreadsheet, it will show them as columns. So the first one's going to be my value, and the second one's going to be my description. Now, if I have this first record in here that tells me what the two columns represent, that's fine. I'll show you how to deal with that as well. I can open up a CSV file and I can use it with, we'll do uh, just Notepad. If I open it Notepad, you'll see 
this is a first value, comma, and then the second value. These are my two columns that I have. So you can either use a spreadsheet or a text document to create your CSV file. We'll take that out of the way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do load. I'm going to go to my source. And because I'm going to use these descriptions, I'm going to go with the first one. When it brings it in there, it brings in that value, that, that first record that's up there. I just select that, say remove selected. And now I have all my values from that CSV file. This makes it much easier to standardize and make it better within your organization, your workflow. You can keep that in a special place that you can use at any point in time. Once I apply this, now when I go to my attribute table, I start to do my edits. And you see my type is now using, you see drive, that is the description that you see. However, the value that it does store in there is going to be the DR. It will store the actual attribute value, even though I see the attribute uh, description that's in there. And that's really all there is to use a, a value map to make your drop-down list. You can do this for more than one of your fields. You can use it for all your fields if you want to in your layer. It's very simple. I highly recommend using CSV files. Create a standard list of predefined attributes if you ever have them for any of your layers. Uh, it helps you keep your data cleaner. It makes data entry much easier. Well, I hope this helped you, and we'll create some more videos here that uh, address little issues that you may have down below. Please leave some comments. Tell me what you like to see, what you don't like to see, uh, and subscribe to our channel. That way you'll be updated when new material comes out. Thank you very much.